Okay, VAT, who asked that question? Gary. Hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. This, this might be a bit uh, simplistic, but I'm paying a lot of VAT on uh, refurbed and all that stuff, but obviously not able to charge it. Is there a better structure to be able to... You need to expand on that scenario a bit more. Um, so at the moment, paying a lot throughout the year on VAT for builders and uh, the Are these for bike led properties? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can't claim the VAT back because you're not making battable supplies because you can't charge the VAT on the rent. Or, or there might be some other structure. There is if you do commercial conversions uh, the, and the, if you sell the properties, you claim back the VAT. If you hold on to the properties, you can form. Uh, okay. So, Alexander and Gary go into partnership. They have a, a limited company. They buy a commercial property, they then convert it to say, say 15 flats. If they sell all the 15 flats, they claim back the VAT that they've paid on the refurb, okay? Generally speaking, the standard rate for VAT is 20%. If you're doing a commercial conversion, so you're increasing the number of units, or reducing the number of units, or you're buying a house which has been empty for two years or longer, you pay 5% VAT. Okay, so in this particular case, they're paying 5%. If you outsource or subcontract the <coughs> labor and the materials, you pay 5% on both. If you want to try and be clever and say, I'll outsource the labor, I'll buy the materials myself, then you pay 20% on the materials. So from a cash flow point of view, it might be better for you to outsource the whole thing to a, a contractor or subcontractor. Once you, so you're paying 5%. At the end, you sell all the units, you get to keep the VAT. So you'd reclaim it from HMRC. If you keep the units, then what you can do is form another company, and this is complicated. I'm just simplifying it for you for information purposes for, for today. You form another company, which is owned 100% by, this, uh, your, by, by company one. So it owns 100% of the shares. You create a, a lease of longer than 21 years. So this company now becomes the management company and you claim back all the 5% VAT, Gary. Yeah, in this particular company here. But it has to be a lease of longer than 21 years. Yeah, yeah, okay. But standard buy to let can't do it. Okay, because you're not charging VAT on the rent. Happy with that? Yeah. Cool, so VAT done. Next. Capital allowances. Whose question was that? You, that was you, Joe, wasn't it? Yeah. Go for it. Well, first off, thanks to Kevin Pulaski. Some brilliant information on claiming capital allowances back on service accommodation. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll that Kevin's good. The other one, I'm not so sure about, by the way. <laughs> so, so it's good you, do, you, um, you mentioned his full name. I now have a, a complex <laughs> circumstance with a portfolio landlord, um, two brothers, owning um, 22 properties between them, want to sell up. They don't seem to care very much about getting massive value from it, but they do really want to not pay as much tax as they can possibly avoid, because they'd rather stick two fingers with a tax man than make as much money as they could from selling the property. So what I'm looking, complex question is, if they claim capital allowances by making some of their property service accommodation, can they offset that allowance against any of their income from other parts of their property portfolio? No. That's a really clear answer. And the problem you've got is if they claim capital allowances and then they want to sell the property, yeah. depending on how quickly they claim the capital allowances, because you can claim them quickly by using something called your annual investment allowance, mm -hmm. okay? When they sell them, they might have to pay some of the tax back to HMRC that they saved. Okay, interesting. So they've got to be careful, but it is a good opportunity, it's, and it's a big opportunity. The other benefit for them is if they f start service accommodation and run that for two years, Joe, yeah. as a business, and then sell it, sell the property with the service accommodation as a business, they then claim entrepreneur's relief and only pay 10% tax on the gain as opposed to uh, 18 or 28% on residential property. So even though it's all big saving, they can, they can still As long as they form a, they, they separate it, so they've got buy to let and they've got a service accommodation business over here, they run that for two years, and that means that they qualify for entrepreneur's relief. The first million pounds, ten tax at 
Now, if you're going to give that advice to them for free, Joe, I'm going to be really pissed off with you, by the way. Uh, but, but if you give them my number, you're my second best friend after Kevin, of course. Uh, does that have to be in a limited company? Or they still have their own? No, you can, you can claim entrepreneurship relief in your own name, partnership, LLP, or a limited company. So you've got a house for two years. And it's been service accommodation. It's been, you can still do that. Then, yeah, that's right. And you, and you sell it as, as a service accommodation business, yeah? Yep. Okay, that's one of the beauties of service accommodation. But if you want to know more, Kevin's the champion on that. Anybody else on capital allowances? And by the, by the way, I'm like, it's good Kevin's covered that for you. Big opportunity. A lot of money to be saved when you're buying property and when you're refurbing property. The only caveat for you, okay, for today is if you're buying the commercial property in, an, in a SAS, you can't claim capital allowances. And the reason why you can't do that is because a SAS doesn't pay any tax. So you can't use off the, the allowances against any taxable uh, profit, yeah? So apart from that, SAS is fantastic. <laughs>